Hello everyone and welcome to a really awesome game from a really uh, cool event you guys requested. A lot of you have requested this one as uh, uh, the lowest seed of the tournament, uh, Divya Deshmukh rated 2216, has won the tournament, the women's uh, Tata Steel India Rapid. Uh, and uh, she defeated some incredible players there, uh, including the, uh, the, the the top Indian women chess player Hampi Conero and also women's world champion Juvenjo. Okay, she did not defeat her, she drew against her in round two. And... Um, uh, well, it, it was very uh, interesting until the very end. In the very end, uh, this is the final round. This is round nine. So Divya has to defeat Humpy uh, in order to at least contest for the first place. And um, uh, Juvenjun was facing Anna Ushenina. And if Juvenjun wins, uh, she will also be able to um, uh, sort of tie for first with, with the Divya. So let's see what happened in this one. A really, really uh, great game. Great middle game. Great end game. Great everything. So let's dive straight into it. So uh, Humpy has the white pieces and she opens with pawn to d4. Uh, we have knight to f6, pawn to c4, e6, and knight to f3. We have pawn to b6. Divya goes for the queen's Indian defense. Uh, sorry about that. Uh, and pawn to g3. You will want to counter the uh, fianchetto of the light square bishop with a fianchetto of the light square bishop. So bishop to a6, the Nimsovich uh, variation, also known as the uh, exaggerated fianchetto. We have knight b to d2 and pawn to c5. So everything um, already seen before, nothing new here. Bishop g2, knight to c6 and d captures on c5. Now we have b captures on c5 and we have castles. Uh, bishop to e7, also preparing to castle. Pawn to b3. Uh, Humpy wants to think to the dark square bishop as well. Castles and bishop to b2. We have pawn to d5 striking in the center. C captures on d5, e captures, uh, and now there is a game where rook to e1 was played, but here we have the immediate rook to c1, and it is now as of move 12 that we have a completely new game. Uh, so Divya continues development. We have queen to b6. Now the rooks are connected and ready to be put on uh, useful files, and rook to e1. Uh, getting off of this diagonal, so now you can advance the e pawn, and you would very much like to play pawn to e4, and that's why Divya stops. That he play, she plays knight to e4. Uh, we have knight to e5, offers a trade of, uh, of the knights here, but also threatening a fork with knight to d7. So Divya trades knight, captures, bishop captures, and now just rook a to d8. We have queen to c2 now, getting off of the d file, uh, and uh, pawn to f5 now. Now the knight is nicely defended here, pawn to e3, and now queen uh, back to e6, attacking the, knight, uh, the bishop here, bishop back to b2, and now rook to c8. Now the pawn is nicely defended, you can bring the other rook to d8 and then you will have a lot of breakthroughs in maybe later on maybe h6 g5 and so on so knight to f3 uh, rook f to d8 and now queen back to b1 of course getting the queen off of the c file uh, bishop to f6 and now a uh, queen to a1 preparing to uh, bring the knight over to e5 if uh, divya does not trade bishops and she goes king to f7 uh, and this king to f7 move is uh, when i first saw the game i thought it was a draw offering uh, but you'll see just what happens here now you could choose between some moves bishop captures on f6 or pawn to a3 uh uh humpy goes for knight to e5 with check and divya just goes back king to g8 with knight back to f3 king to f7 repeating the position but now humpy uh stops the re repetition she plays pawn to h4 pawn to h6 and now again knight to e5 with check king to g8 knight to f3 King to f7 and knight to e5 check. King to g8, knight to f3. And here, if she, if she repeats with king to f7, uh, it will be a draw by threefold repetition. Uh, but uh, regardless of the rating uh, difference, she goes uh, uh, she goes uh, uh, for continuing play. Bishop captures on b2. And okay, queen captures. And now how do you continue this? Well, you could try to remaneuver the rooks or maybe try and get some sort of a breakthrough in. But she goes for pawn to g5. And now uh, it, it's not the most precise move, but it really requires you to um, uh, think in a, in, in a tough position. And the strongest move, as uh, it often is, is pawn to b4 here. It was not played in the game, but just to show you, uh, now, if you play pawn to c4, uh, you will, uh, uh, well, black will never be able to get this d4 move, and you can even play b5, bishop to b7, even a4 in, and you can get a knight to d4, you can get a knight to e5, also you can get a queen to d4, queen to e5, but uh, most importantly, black can never execute d4. Uh, however, in the game, rook e to d1 was played, and now it's much different. King to h7, we have h captures and g5, h captures, and now, again, pawn to b4 is the idea, but she plays uh, queen to e5. 
have. She offers a queen trade, and Divya, I imagine, very happily trades. Captures, captures, and king to g7. We have rook to c2 now, preparing to double up on the c file, and king to f6. Kicking away the knight from such an active square, knight to f3, and now pawn to g4. Now, you could bring the knight to h4 or h2, but uh, those are uh, very passive squares for the knight. h2 is still okay. You can shift it over to f1, and then later on to d2, h4 uh, would be a bit too much. Uh, instead, she goes knight to e1, and now we have pawn to c4. Again, uh, not the most precise, but this is rapid game, and they are both below a minute. Uh, d4 is uh, straight up winning. Uh, point is that after pawn to d4, uh, there's not all that much you can do to counter uh, black. For example, if pawn captures, pawn captures, you're going to play rook captures, and now bishop captures, and this pawn is now incredible. The rook is already behind it. The, the bishop is very active. If you capture, then you just fix uh, black's pawn structure and improve the central presence. Uh, after pawn to c4, however, uh, it's a little bit different, because now uh, you could capture on e4 and now for example bishop captures on e4 f captures and knights to g2 again you can never uh, uh, push this pawn uh, all the way to d4 and you don't really uh, have all that much here if you play c captures on b3 you can just play rook captures on c8 now it is similar to what happened in the game but here bishop to f1 was played and now comes king to e5 rook d to c1 doubling up on the c file and now knight to g5 with uh, the option of going knight to f3 knight to h3 bishop to e2 and now c captures captures on b3 and here you absolutely must play a, a captures on b3 but in the game Humpy decided to trade rooks first she played rook captures on c8 and now I'm pretty sure even without pausing the video you can figure out how to uh, win this position there's only one move uh, and I'm sure you've already found that even without pausing and the move of course is uh, rook captures on c8 rook captures on c8 but now not bishop captures on c8 we of course throw in the in-between move b captures on a2 and now look at this the rook is hanging the bishop is hanging and also there's the threat of a1 queen so you have to do you know uh, something to minimize casualties. You have to play rook to c1 to cover the queening square. But now bishop captures on e2. Rook to a1 goes after the pawn. Uh, sorry, this was not played. This is what would happen if you go rook back to c1. And now bishop to c4 would uh, stop uh, you from ever capturing that. And this rook is now pretty much out of the game. So uh, Humpy decided to go uh, not, not to go back with rook to c1. She played rook to e8 with check. And after king to d6, now she just played knight to c2. She defended the a1 square with the knight. But of course, the bishop uh, is still gone. So bishop captures on e2, rook to a8, and now knight to f3 with check. We have king to h1 and now knight to e1. You could also play the immediate a6, uh, but first she goes for knight to e1. The idea being that if knight captures, you can just bring a queen into the game. Uh, but now knight to a1. Of course, uh, if, if you go for the pawn and try to give up the knight for two pawns, it's not all that great. If captures, captures, uh, the, uh, you can uh, simply defend the knight. So the, the, the two pieces will beat a rook always. Uh, so instead, knight to a1 was tried here, but now comes pawn to a6. Now the pawn is nicely defended. Ended, rook to c8 and now bishop to d3 and now look at this beautiful maneuver rook to c1 of course defending the back rank and attacking the knight here knight to c2 and that's all there is now the the problem is if you play king to g2 there's knight captures on a1 and after rook captures bishop to b1 uh forever you know enclosing the the rook in his tomb on, on a1 uh, and the king will simply go uh, c5, b4, b3, b2, and uh, gobble up the rook, and then uh, promote this pawn to a queen. So, of course, you can't do that. After knight c2, rook captures on c2 was played, but it doesn't help um, uh, Humpy all that much. Bishop captures, knight captures, and now just king to c5, king to g2, king to c4, and he was in this position on move 51 that uh, Humpy Canary resigned the game, uh, as there is nothing more to be done here. After you play a few more moves, king f1, of course, king comes to c, three and after knight a1 king b, b2 will uh, eliminate the knight and then you just promote your pawn to a queen so uh masterful play by uh by the uh bottom c divya deshmukh like i said 22 16 and um well there are uh 250 300 uh, 300 rating points higher rated players here in this tournament so absolutely incredible that she was able to win it. And uh, here are all of her results. So she did not go undefeated. She lost one game to Polina Shuvalova, who obviously played a spectacular tournament as even the um, reigning world champion Juve Engine could not defeat her in the final round. She only got a draw and that's why 
uh, Divya got first place in this tournament, whereas uh, um, uh, Women's World Champion Ju Wenjun got second place with six and a half. And you can see that she won 91 rating point for this one event, which is, I mean, absolutely incredible, almost 100 rating points for a single tournament. Yeah, just, you know, went through everyone, uh, only uh, international master Polina Shuvalova. Uh, dealt the uh, the only blow of, of the tournament. So yeah, uh, great stuff. Uh, congratulations to Divya on such a spectacular event. Uh, thank you guys for suggesting it. And uh, well, yeah, hope you enjoyed it. I mean, it was a, gr a great choice of an opening going for the Queen's Indian defense and then just uh, st uh, stabilizing. Uh, we thought that she was going to repeat with that King to F7 business, but it was, uh, you know, only only uh, testing your opponent. And maybe sometimes you want to even repeat the position a few times just to annoy your, your opponent. Then your opponent is thinking, okay, are you going to repeat? But you're never really going to repeat. And she went for H6, G5, break, uh, broken through, and it was enough to, um, you know, uh, ca catch her off guard um, in, in a rapid game at least. Uh, so yeah, once again, really hope you guys uh, enjoyed it. Uh, I would like to thank uh, GersnyChessFestival.org.gg, Phil Maltus, Jaren Asher, Rohan Tana, and David Kimura for your contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. Uh, if, uh, as usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you for watching, and I will see you soon. Continuing to check up on your wonderful suggestions, uh, such as this one and whatever else happens in the chess world. Uh, so thank you all. I will see you soon, and have an excellent rest of your day.